Hello everybody, this is Veena, your storyteller from Assam. Well, today I'm going to tell you an Asmi's folk tale. All right? And uh, when we talk about Asmi's folk tale, we remember about the famous high Roti, Lokhinan Bezborwa. And Asmi's people are extremely grateful for his wonderful creation of Buri Ai Hadu meaning Grandmother's Tales. So from, from this book, Buya Hadu Grandmother's Tales, I'm going to narrate a story, all right? And the story is Kukuri Kona, meaning night blindness. So I'm going to narrate the story. Once upon a time in a certain village, a man had two beautiful daughters. The elder daughter's name was Rupeshwari and the younger one was known as Gunaswari. When Rupaswari was ready to get married, her father tried to find a groom, but he didn't find a suitable boy. So the father set out to a distant village in search of a groom. Rupeshwari's mother told her husband, don't go far away in search of a groom. I won't send my daughter to a far off place. If she marries nearby, I shall be able to see her frequently, but that wouldn't be possible if she is married to a boy from a far off place. Unable to refuse his wife's wish, the father married off Rupeshwari to a young man who lived nearby. Rupeshwari's husband was suffering from night blindness, but he concealed this disease from others. Neither the villagers nor the in-laws came to know about this secret. The son-in-law borrowed a bullock from his father-in-law to plough his land for a few days. One day, his father-in-law asked him to return the bullock. But it was evening by the time the bullock came from grazing. So the son-in-law was in trouble, thinking how to take the bullock to the house of his father-in-law at that hour. He thought for a long time and then he decided to set the bullocks off towards the direction of his father-in-law's house. He thought that he would hold the tail of the bullock and the bullock would be able to reach its familiar place. Accordingly, the bullock went on its way and reached its old shed and he too reached there by holding onto the bullock's tail. Seeing his son-in-law, the father-in-law asked, Is that our son-in-law? The son-in-law answered, Yes, as you asked for the bullock, I have brought it back and I am going to tie it to a post in the shed. When the son-in-law didn't come out from the shed, after a long time, the father-in-law called, Come here, what are you doing there? Wash your hands and face and have some food. Do not go without having your meal. The son-in-law answered, I am counting the number of cows in your cow shed. The father-in-law said, What is there to count? There are few sickly cows. The rest died of disease. Saying this, he went inside and said to his daughter Guneshwari, Take some water and ask your brother-in-law to freshen up. The sister-in-law called, Hello, brother-in-law. Please come and freshen up. I have bought water for you. Hearing the voice of his sister-in-law, he answered, Is it my dear sister-in-law? Come and receive me, or else I won't go. Where would you find a brother-in-law like me? As demanded by him, the innocent Gunishwari held her brother-in-law by his hand and requested him to come. Then she pushed the water pot towards him to wash his feet. He said, you should wash my feet. I have come to your house after a long time, but it seems that you all do not love me anymore. Guneshwari thought that her brother-in-law was joking, but she washed his feet, took him inside by holding his hand and help him to sit on the mat. Soon it was time for the dinner. The father-in-law sat down to eat. 
the mother-in-law served food to her son-in-law and asked him to eat his food. But he did not get up. When she called out many times, he answered, I'm very tired today. I can't even get up. If you all love me, please bring my food here. On hearing this, she brought his food near him. Food was served. But he couldn't see and consequently he didn't eat. Seeing that, Gunishwari said, Brother-in-law, have your food. He answered, I will eat only when you make my hands touch the rice or else I won't. That is because you are not going to stay for long in your father's place. You would be married in a short time. I would like to make you work so that you would remember me later. On hearing him, Gunishwari held his hand and made him touch the rice. After that, he started to eat. Then the sister-in-law went inside. After some time, the mother-in-law came out and saw that a cat was eating rice from the same plate of the son-in-law. Seeing that, she told him, Son, can't you see that a cat is eating from your plate? Why don't you shoo it off? He answered, Mother, let it eat with me. It is reasonable that only man should eat. Other animals need food too. The mother-in-law said, No, you shoo the cat away. Don't you feel bad? Saying this, she drove away the cat. She said to him to shoo away the cat if it came again and handed him a piece of wood for that purpose. Then she went inside. When she again brought some food for him, the son-in-law thought that the cat had come back to eat from his plate. Thinking so, he hit the hand of his mother-in-law with the piece of wood. She cried in pain and said, oh, oh, What have you done? You have struck my hand. The son-in-law realized the mistake he did. He caught hold of her feet and said, Mother, I fell asleep while eating. I thought that the cat had come again and was eating from my plate. I touch your feet. Forgive me and do not tell about this to anyone. She forgave him and told him not to worry. Then the son-in-law got up from his seat and groped his way out to wash his hands. After this incident, he felt very much embarrassed to go inside. So he started for home without telling anybody. After going a few steps, he could not find his way and entered into the part of the courtyard which was full of wild arrow. He took it to be a large forest and thought, it is not possible for me to get out of it in the darkness of night. So I shall stay here for the night. As soon as dawn sets in, I shall leave for home without being seen by anyone. Thinking so, he sat there without any second thought. On the other hand, when the in-laws did not find him, they thought that he had gone home. After some time, the mother-in-law brought a pot of full water and threw among the shrubs beneath which the son-in-law was hiding. He was completely drenched in water, but he thought that it was raining. So he called out, Oh, rain God, be kind to this miserable man and do not send rain. The humiliation I have suffered today is enough. Do not send any more misery to this unfortunate. On hearing the voice of the son-in-law, the mother-in-law hurriedly went inside and took a lamp and saw that the son-in-law was sitting drenched amidst the shrubs. Then she understood that he had night blindness and she told her husband and daughter about it too. Then the son-in-law was taken in and was bathed. He was dressed in dry clothes and after that he went to sleep for the night in his father-in-law's house. So that's about the story of Kukuri Kona, Night Blindness, and I hope you must have enjoyed it. So till we meet next time, bye.